Hi, this is Trey with Trey Brews. I have a one gallon recipe refill kit by Craft Brew here. This is the Hefeweizen kit, a German wheat beer. I'm really excited about this one. So come with some packets of information. Okay, so this is the kit that you would use if you already have their um, starter kit. You don't have to have their specific kit. They have to have a fermenter and use all that type of necessary for So this just comes with the kit, basically. So, first things first, we have the malt extract. This is a Bavarian wheat extract, one pound of it. And actually, I should have said first, we've got the grains bag to steep those in. Then we'll be adding the Tet Nang hops. That's a new one to me. And then it comes with the yeast to add at the end. And the one step no rinse sanitizer. So first step of course I've got a gallon of distilled water from a local grocery store here. I like to use theirs use this over the tap water because I don't know how clean tap water is. This I'm confident in. So I'll give this a gallon. I'm just going to add it to my big pot here. And then I'm going to heat this up to 155 degrees. And that's when we'll add in the grains. So as I'm heating up this water, keeping a close eye, let me see if I can show this, keeping a good close eye on that temperature, it's got to get up to 155 degrees, like I said, we're getting kind of close, so turn the heat down a little. One problem that I've had with my first two brews is I let that get too hot, um, so it looks like we're getting really close, and then we'll add the grains. Alright, so the water's at right around 155 to 160 so I've got my grains backed up here kind of just like steeping tea is what I say um, so I'm gonna go ahead and drop it in there it goes to the bottom um, just start around every once in a while and set the timer for 15 minutes okay so we got four seconds left so this has been um, steeping you can show it real quick this has been steeping in the water for 15 minutes. It's not darkened it up much at all. It's maybe just gotten it a little cloudy. One thing to remember is when it's um, when you pull out the grains, definitely do not squish them. It releases a lot of tannins, they say. So just discard of that. And then once it the last minute to go, I cranked up the heat because I know that. Um, we have to get this up to a rolling boil, or not yet, we have to just get it to see the first um, boiling bubble, and then we add the malt, so I'm trying to get it hot real quick, so we'll come back then. So as you can see, we're definitely at that uh, boiling stage, so I'm going to turn this up for just a sec, get this off the heat. Ooh, that's hot. Take the, uh, again, it's Bavarian wheat, that's the dried malt extract says to stir it in kind of slowly don't let it um, stick to the bottom because it can do that pretty easily it's definitely not beer yet but I always think that at this step this is when it really starts to kind of look like it with that foamy top So what we do, once we get all this stirred in and it gets fully dissolved, we're going to move it back to the heat and turn it on to medium high, get it up to a rolling boil, and about at that point that's when we're going to add the hops. In this recipe for the, um, the Hefeweizen that we're making, you add in half of the hops um, at the very start of the boil, the 60 minute boil. And then you add in the rest, I think it said two minutes remaining. We'll double check that once we get closer, but you 
again, we're just stirring this in, dissolving it all and making sure none of it sticks to the bottom. So looking at my metal spoon here, I see it's pretty well dissolved in here. So I'm going to go ahead and sit this back down. It's starting to smell really good. Move it back onto the heat. And again, get it to a rolling boil. Okay, so here we've got the hops, and they're the Tetanang hops. They're used for bittering and aroma, and so half of these go in at 60 minutes, and then the last half goes in two minutes left in the boil. Okay, so we're definitely at a rolling boil. I have my hop bag, or hops bag rather, tied up here. I'm going to go ahead and take it. Drop it in, and then use my spoon to make sure it all goes in there. And then I'll have to watch for any boil overs, because this is usually when they happen. So I am going to set the phone down. Okay, so we've got about two minutes left in the boil. So I'm taking the rest of my hops and dump them in. just a little for a minute. I'm going to stir it around a little bit and keep it going until it is done in just about two minutes. There. Okay, so our timer just ended. So that's a full 60 minute boil. Got my little plate of trash over here. So I'm going to scoop up my hops bag that filtered out a lot of the hops so that it doesn't um, it actually held the hops and keeps all the nasty stuff in there so it doesn't stay in deeper later. So, here's the finished wort. We've got the uh, sink full of water over here. Actually, just half full. So, pop sound. So, now what we're doing... I'm actually going to reach down here. Okay, so I was getting the pot lid. So, here we go over here, steaming hot wort. We put the lid on and then just fill this up with water. So some places will tell you to immediately put ice in the water. I did that the first time and then I saw a video of somebody where they did exactly what I'm doing. And then that you allow the water to initially chill that out a little and then you drain that water and then fill it back up with water and add ice all around it, basically making an ice bath. Um, it seemed to work faster for me last time, so that's what I'm going to do. So we'll let this chill out just a little bit, come back, show the ice bath, and then we'll go on from there. Okay, so this is what I meant. Um, I just drained out all the water and then refilled it with water, and there's ice all the way around the sink. Um, I actually turned my, I have a ice chest, and I turned it on as cold as it gets. I already had some ice in there, so this was so cold it was almost, it was actually sticking to me. Um, so, it should work pretty well. Got some ice packs as well, I think there's a total of four of them in there, and that really works well because you can just refreeze those, whereas the ice is, of course, going to melt and you can't use it again. So, combination of those two works really well for me. Okay, so now I have, this is the sink right here, right here, I'm standing in front of it. Um, right here we have the wart chilling down still, and while you while you do that, you need to sanitize everything because the wart is going to be sanitized because it was boiled, but now that it's below that temperature, anything that touches it has to be sanitized. Um, Sanitization is actually one of the most important, if not the most important step of brewing beer. Uh, that's something that really surprised me of how, I'm, I mean, of course being clean is important, but really sanitization, if you're not clean, if you're not, um, if you're not cautious with how you brew it, make sure everything's clean, your beer is ruined. It's that simple. So, we have a piece of Tupperware here, you'll see in the video, can't show it too well, but you can probably hear it. The, uh, it's like a powder sanitizer that they provide. And then we've got 
the carboy, a gallon carboy, the topper for it. Sounds like our brew is almost done. Um, the, uh, what's this called? Funnel. The thermometer, which we're about to check the temperature of the wort with. And then the hose and the little piece that goes on that as well. So, anyways, take this, add hot water, uh, warm water, rather. And then basically, you want to mix this around a little bit. It creates a really sanitized, um, I almost call it a sanitization bath for all of your supplies that we're using here. Um, but while this fills up, so we're filling this up and adding all the smaller items in here and let them soak for about 60 seconds. And then we will clean out the carboy as well and also check on the temperature of the wort. It needs to get down to uh, 75 degrees or lower. Not much lower, but I want to get it to about 75 degrees. So this is about good. I'm going to sanitize everything. Check the temperature. And then we'll be about ready to move it into the carboy. Just about done. Okay, so everything is sanitized. So I'm now moving it over to a few pieces of paper towel so that it's not touching a um, unsanitized surface. So it's remaining sanitized. Okay, so here's the carboy. This is kind of fun. You take your sanitizing solution and pour some in here. Now this sanitizer is really neat. A lot of them, I'm seeing a lot of them on the market are no rinse. So, if you were using something like dish soap, you would see the bubbles in this and think it's going to taste soapy or something like that. Or you need to rinse it out. Oh, you can't see it. Here we go. Just mix it around like this. But what I was getting at is, um, this is no rinse. So, suds or no suds, you're good to go. The carboy is now sanitized, and there's just a little bit of suds, but I just wanted to show that's what I'm talking about. You do not have to worry about getting those out. That's really nice. So, everything is sanitized. We're going to check the temperature of the wort over here. I didn't use that the first time. Um, I'm getting a tripod for my my phone soon, so that will make it much easier. So, okay, I'm gonna add it through the funnel. And because we filtered the hops, or not filtered, well, we used a bag to hold the hops during the actual brewing process. Not many, or not much sediment or anything like that is really coming through here. And as I'm getting close to the end, I'm seeing a little more of that, so I'm gonna try to stop. Yeah, there's a lot of hops in here, so I'd say we're about good. There's not even, uh, Maybe not even a centimeter full in there. So, okay. So here's the carboy right now. It's close to full, but we are going to go ahead, per the instructions, and go ahead and fill this up. Okay. So you can see the uh, carboy right here. We got a lot of little foam right there, um, which is fine. I have the yeast. It's been sitting in that sanitizing solution because again, anything touching this needs to be sanitized, including the scissors. So we need to open it. Just washed my hands as well. So in here is the yeast. 
Let's see if I can show that. Kind of. Maybe, maybe not. Um, anyway, go ahead. Pour all the yeast in. Be careful not to let any not go in the carboy. See, I'm touching it to the carboy. That's why it needs to be completely sanitized. And the um, stopper is also sanitized. So that's all in there. Go ahead and put that on there. Again, I just washed my hands. Now when you get your exercise, and you just shake it up exactly like that for over a minute, which I'll do in a sec. Um, what this does is it oxy, or it's called aerating, but it provides oxygen to the yeast, which is required. Um, and then it's gonna start making alcohol, good flavored beer. So I'm gonna shake this up, and then we'll be back. Okay, so now that you're wore out from shaking a gallon of unfermented beer, <laughs> you take one end of the hose and put it down into that cap there. And then I will take a cup. Okay, my phone almost fell in the sink, but we're back. So we have one end of the hose is in the carboy. And then the other end is going to go into this piece. And then this end will go into a glass of water, which is also sanitized. The water in there is from the sanitizer. Come on, little buddy. Okay, so we've got this squeeze through. Again, my hands are clean. Okay. So, then the other end of that goes into this glass of water. So, I'm going to move this to where I actually store it, and then I'll explain that a little bit more. Okay, so here's my little beer brewing lab. <laughs> this is the chocolate milk stout I've got going, and American Pale Ale with all of the dates. And I actually have those profiles completely mixed up. The one on the left is supposed to be on the right, vice versa. Anyways, here's the Hefeweizen that we just brewed. So we have the hose going from there over into this glass of sanitized water. So what that does is this will, of course, start fermenting very soon. And that will be sending gas all the way along this hose. And then this will start bubbling pretty crazily. And we'll see a lot of movement inside of that carboy there. Okay, so this is actually going to be a two-part video. The next part is going to be probably, um, actually it's going to be showing a lot of the fermentation process, switching from the blow-off hose that we just made, switching to the airlock, showing the fermentation over the next two weeks, probably a little bit of bottling, and then definitely trying out the finished product. Since this is a Hefeweizen being a wheat beer, that is my favorite type of beer actually, so I'm really excited to try this one. So stay tuned, that video will be out in about a month, maybe five weeks, if it's past five weeks since you've seen this, or since I uploaded this rather, there will probably be a link right here, a link to go to the part two of this video, and so we'll be able to wrap this up. See you then.